the way math may have been taught before, um, so a page full of skill and drill problems in isolation and said, here's 50 problems, go solve them. I stand in front of the room, say, this is how you do it, now practice. Um, that was easy for students in that they didn't have to do a lot of work because I could guarantee do step one, step two, step three, and you'll learn it, but you'll learn it for now or you'll learn it for the test at the end of the week. How about um, you put these in the table to see what they're like in order? Do 1.68 times 10 to the 13th power. Now being given the opportunity to dig into a, a real life problem where they have to do the work. They have to apply that mental energy and flex those mental muscles and the fact that they do all that work and they draw out the knowledge themselves, there's more of a chance that it's going to stick. So the strategy we would use is to label our parts. Now they're seeing that what I taught in September is connected to what I teach in June and, and then what I taught in 8th grade is connected to what they learn in ninth grade and 10th grade and backward connected to what they learn in elementary school and they can really see how math is this, this progression and they're building on the skills they have. So I noticed that when I went around some of you were writing the type of relationship you saw which is great but I want to know how you figured that out because if I it's, it's great to see when presented with an unfamiliar problem that students can read it, apply the problem solving strategies we worked on and say to themselves well I know these basic skills from earlier in my school career I'm going to apply them here and then afterward I'm going to have this new concept that I developed on my own so rather than being just a passive uh, participant they're really active in it it's a lot less me and a lot more of them and I serve more as a facilitator of their thinking.